Ah, fuck. I forgot to... My dad drew you. I forgot to tell Andrew. I couldn't... For some reason, in the, he sent me the thing. I couldn't see the picture. I'm going to text him right now because I want to see this. Hold on a second. Somebody takes the time to draw old freckles with leftover paint, I'm sure. All right. Andrew. I couldn't see the picture that that dude's dad drew of me. Can you text it to me? Question mark. You, you always have to have good punctuation in your voice text. Um, all right. I'll get back to that one. Um, well, anyway, I'll just read it here. So my dad is a big fan of you. So as I, he actually was, oh, so am I. He actually was the one to show me your specials. Dude, if I hear one more story like this coming from Mexico, I think old Freckles is going to have to go down there and do a little fucking comedy club. Um, and he is a big fan of Star Wars, too. So when I showed him The Mandalorian and saw you, he got excited and quickly drew you in your Star Wars character. How fucking cool is that? And there it is. I didn't see it. I got I to gotta look at it. And I watched probably a joke picture. Uh, really nice acting in the show. Sincerely from Mexico. Well, you know what? I just watched this whole thing last night. Um, I got into, uh, I was watching this whole thing on Julio Cesar Chavez. I, I, that, that was the entire time when I was trying to make it as a comedian, and I missed so much of his career. And my God, I watched this whole fucking thing on him. The body blows. The way that guy would just, he would just break you. <laughs> just watching I never saw a guy go to the fucking liver so fast after a headshot just watching this entire compilation. And the guy's like career record was like 147, six and something. I, I, I got to get this right. Um, as everybody claims to be the greatest. Uh, let's see here. I mean, just having that many fights. 107, six and two. What the fuck? Unbelievable. So he's the bar. If you ever wondered why Mexican fighters are so goddamn tough and don't quit, it's because they got to live up to that guy. Incredible, incredible story. Um, all right. Easter Bunny is all about fucking. Okay, here we go. This guy, this person is going for big air early. Hey, Billy McVegan titty. <laughs> Last Monday, you asked what the Easter Bunny has to do with Easter. Well, I used to go down a rabbit hole myself, pun intended. By a, uh, I went down a rabbit hole myself, pun intended, by a guy named William Cooper, who was a conspiracy theorist. He ran a radio podcast called The Hour of the Time, and in a few episodes, he broke down the symbolisms of holidays like Easter and Christmas. Easter is based off a pagan deity named... Oh, Esther? Dude, the Catholic Church just ripped off everything from the pagans and is all about fertility and rebirth. It corresponds with spring. Everything has life again, born again, which is why they threw Christ coming back from the dead on top of that after the Romans became Catholic. But the Easter Bunny is all about fucking and having babies. Yeah, see, guys, he's not coming back. The guy, I'm telling you, this is just all, it's a marketing plan. But the Easter, because this guy just told me this, and I 100%, this makes one more, way more fucking sense than this shit. Somebody dying and coming back from the dead. But the Easter Bunny is all about fucking and having babies, being fruitful. The chicks are obviously about babies being born, but it's all about the sun's return to a particular spot in the sky, the vernal equinox. Google that shit. But say hello to Noah and kiss the kids, whatever that means. Noah's Ark. Love the, the podcast and please, for the love of Oster and a baby Jesus, go fuck yourself. Well, here's my question. What about people in the Southern Hemisphere? When it's spring up here, it's going into fall down there. So then do they, when is their Easter? It's the same time, right? Or do they have a different Jesus? Um, you know what it was? Is they did it way back in the time when they didn't give a fuck about the Southern Hemisphere. They were just in Rome. Is That's probably the explanation for it travel right all right yoga douche recommended reading and recipes that's what i'm trying to be although i kind of fell off of my yoga i need to get back to it just find my center my chi all right hi bill hi bill 
My husband loves your podcast. I've, er- I've heard that you're doing yoga and meditation now. Trying. I'm trying to. My husband also thinks yoga is for douchebags. You know what? I like your husband, uh, and I agree with him. But he has seen how much it's helped me deal with my depression and chronic pain. I was in a really bad car accident six years ago. Oh, man, sorry to hear that. I was lucky enough to have a great yoga teacher who taught me belly breathing or pranayama. It helps calm the nervous system and deal with anger. Oh, shit. Okay. I think I need to learn how to do the old pranayama there. Yoga isn't really about stretching. Ah, oh, Jesus. Don't you love that when you're fucking 30 years into doing it? Um, not 30, 20 something years. It's about exploring your inner self and healing. I thought it was about trying to be more stretchy than the person next to you on the mat. I thought it was c- competition. Um, I think you would benefit a lot from this practice. Breathe in fresh air slash life. Exhale the anger. Relax your face, let go of the tension in your shoulder and jaw, rebalance your body and mind. I recommend exploring the wisdom of yoga by Stephen Cope, S-T-E-P-H-E-N-C-O-P-E. I'm reading all of this stuff because as much as a lot of you guys are going to give me shit about this, there's a bunch of you guys quietly being like, I'm going to fucking do that shit. Um, kind of like when I used to drive a Prius. Everybody's like, dude, what are you fucking, did you have to blow the salesman to get that? All right, and then secretly they'd be like, so, does that thing really do good on gas? Anyway, it will help you understand more about your visual, visual, visualizations with, when meditating. A bit of a hard read, but you get an idea of what's happening in your practice. Got to love a difficult read on, on fucking meditation. Uh, whenever I feel anxious at night, I take my time to practice. This takes me away from torturing my husband with my anxiety. I feel a lot clearer after. I also think you should try Costco's frozen stir-fry veggies. They're already sliced. You just add them to your stir-fry protein, cover with sauce, let the veggies cook till tender. Frozen veggies have fewer pesticides than fresh. Who knew? Also try making a stir-fry sauce beforehand and storing it so it's quicker when you cook. My sauce is a third a cup of soy sauce, tablespoon, teaspoon of sesame oil, teaspoon of brown sugar, teaspoon of grated ginger, teaspoon of minced garlic, and a third a cup of water. It's good for any type of stir fry. The ginger and garlic help fight inflammation. Uh, Happy stretching. Go fuck yourself because my husband said you have to end it that way. Best. Oh, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Um, I'm definitely going to say that I'm going to try that. Hopefully I do it. All right. (laughs) Porn addicted 23-year-old. Oh, gee. Hey, Bill, no chill. I'm a 23-year-old guy from Norway, and I'm going to get straight to the point. Like many guy out there, I've been transfixed by porn ever since I found this curse. I love that you called it a curse when I was a little kid. Ever since, I've been watching it once a day and sometimes even more. Until a couple months ago where I figured out that I was addicted to it. My addiction is not nearly as bad as other people had seen, but I noticed I was addicted nevertheless. In my case, my addiction was that I needed to watch it to masturbate. Oh, Jesus. I've been there. Don't get me wrong. I could still do little wank with my imagination. However, I didn't prefer it. Now I've been almost 30 days free and I feel great about it. That's awesome. I still get the urge though, but managed to beat it off. Pun intended. Oh, this is like the pun week. Granted, it's not as hard as quitting smoking, I can imagine. Uh, You mentioned a couple times that you stopped watching porn a while ago. No, but then I relapsed. I've been, I've been doing it again, so I got to stop again. So I just, uh, I went from May to December. And now since December, I on and off. You know, the holidays are rough, everybody. <laughs> Every once in a while, you got to turn to porn to try to take the edge off. So I was just wondering what made you quit? And do you think porn addiction is something we should take seriously? Absolutely. I think we're all lab rats. Social media, um, Uh, porn and all of that stuff and i think the powers that run social media and porn will then do what the cigarette companies do when the studies come out that say these things are bad and they're not good for you they'll they will flood the market with air quote doctors saying that it's healthy that it's not that bad blah 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 that's what always happens um no it's terrible and the people that are in it were abused as kids you know, nobody with options fucking gets into that thing. It's a terrible fucking thing, and you're actually helping it out, you know. So it's be one less 
thing that human beings do to hurt other human beings that you could get away from if you choose to. While I say this, sitting here wearing clothes that were made by crying people in sweatshops that try to kill themselves, but can't because there's nets outside to prevent them from plunging to their death. All right. Husband slash wife argument over the hole in the ground. Literally. Dear back on the road, Bill. Wife and I agreed we both wanted a basketball hoop in our driveway and eventually decided on an in-ground one. Uh, Being that I am the resident basketball expert in the house I played in high school, I decided where it should go on the driveway. Uh, She did give her opinion, but I used the scientific method. I measured the exact length of the driveway. Oh, you went in. To find the exact... I was thinking my dad put one up... uh, he thought the regulation was nine feet. <laughs> so we had a nine foot rim. He built it himself, bought the hoop. It was actually cool, but like it was on a ridiculous, like probably like a, a 20 to 25 degree bank. So, so <laughs> you know, it was probably eight and a half feet if you were on the left side and it was about nine and a half feet on the right side, but it was fun as shit. Um, anyway, he said, uh, wife and I agreed. We both wanted to, Wanted a basketball hoop, uh, blah, 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 blah. I measured the exact length of the driveway to find the exact midpoint so as to have an equal space on both sides of the rim for shooting. Just like the pros do. That's great. We have a six foot, uh, we have a six feet overhang above our garage, which shortens the court on that end. So I moved the hole about 10 inches away from the side to increase the area over there to shoot. Uh, we'll have also oh, that probably messed with the symmetry that she didn't like with the house, right? Well, after breaking my back digging the hole, the wife says that she do, she don't like it. That is too close to the road, and that the ball will go out to the street too much. We are now on the fourth day of her not speaking to me over this issue. Oh wow, it got to that level. I woke up today with a compromise. I filled the damn hole back in. Oh, of course, of course, because it's all about their fucking feelings. Unbelievable. Do do guys ever win that fucking fight? You can't win. If you win, then they just mope around and be a douche for the rest of time. Or you give in. And then they act like that's a fucking healthy relationship. I'm telling you, all of this bullshit out there about how fucking toxic guys are and they ignore this aspect of fucking women. I swear to God that you are a fucking prisoner of their fucking emotions. That you have to find your happiness within the airspace of their fucking happiness. And they get to fucking do whatever the fuck they want. It's unfucking believe. Oh, sorry, this, that shit just sets me up. Yeah, so you, of course you filled the fucking damn hole back in. Of course you did. This is why guys have funnier fucking stories. You know where's where's her funny? So I pouted, and then he gave in, and I I, I watched a, I watched I you know I enjoyed breaking his spirit. And then the guy's got the story of so I'm fucking filling the fucking goddamn hole back in. It's hilarious. Anyways, and told her we will order a portable one that I can move whenever I want to shoot. All right, so you got a little bit back. Bill, my question is, should I have held the line being that she knows nothing about basketball? I am always the compromiser and bridge builder, and normally I'm okay with it, but on this it really bothers me being her, her lack of understanding or e- on even... Uh, ever playing basketball, plus her literally acting like a child and locking herself in the room until she got her way. In my opinion, really bugs me. How do I kiss and make up on this? Uh, this is what you have to do. This is what you got to you got to play their game. You got to play the fucking guilt game. So this is what you do. OK, you fucking do exactly what the fuck she wants you to do. And then you tell her how unhappy it makes you. And then you don't fucking talk to her. You literally play the game back and be like, this is not, this is, this is an abusive relationship that you do this. And, you, and what's the thing? You can't say it in the tone that I'm saying it. You just got to be like, fine, we'll do it the way you want to do it. And I just want you to know that this makes me really unhappy. She's not even going to fucking play anything. You just convey to her how much pain she's bringing you by doing this constantly. And then that's what you have to do. And then in the end, when she goes, oh, I'm sorry, you can put the hole back. And now you got to go out and dig the fucking hole again. All right? You have to tell her that we need to work on this part of the relationship. All right? I'm just going to say it the way I'd say it to a guy. You got to fix it up for her. Because this is fucking bullshit. This is fucking bullshit. 
All right, let's just say next time I dig a hole, I ain't putting a fucking basketball hoop in it. You understand what I'm saying? No, no, don't go that far, but you know what I mean. It's so fucking ridiculous, and I swear to God, that right there is the normal. That right there is the normal. With all these fucking stats out there that all these fucking stupid feminists are throwing out there, just like the fucking cigarette companies, throwing all of this shit out to, to, to support their side of the argument and acting like they, they want equal footing. They don't. They do not. They do not, because they completely ignore this. Oh, you got me going on a Monday. Um, am I wrong to be jealous of boyfriend using sex apps and watching porn? No, it's, it's, it, that's your line. If that's how that makes you feel, you should communicate that to him, and then he should respect that. See? See that, ladies? I'm not always on the fucking guy's side. Like, that basketball hoop thing, the fucking dude was right, the lady was wrong, and on this one, she's right. Okay, hello from Alaska. Oh, wait a minute, Alaska? What the fuck else is he going to do? Go outside and get eaten by a bear? Um, I love your podcast, Monday podcast and enjoy your straightforward answers. I'm 31 years old and have been with my boyfriend for about 10 years now. You guys are taking it slow, huh? Recently, he's been downloading all these apps that are kind of making me wonder and I guess feel insecure or, uns- or unsure. Oh, he's downloading all these apps. For instance, apps like Find More Fish in the Sea, Fuck Milfs Now, Cheaters.com, live sex now apps, fuck locals apps, so on and so forth. He claims he just does it to look. Oh, my God. Oh, God. Sweetheart. Sweetheart. What's he going to download next? How to kill your girlfriend of 10 years? I'm just into true crime. And he's not doing it to act on anything, but still, it makes me mad. Am I wrong for feeling this way? Absolutely not. And he's been with you for 10 years and he hasn't married you and now he's looking at this shit? Yeah, fuck that. Fuck that. Not only are you right to feel this, get out of this relationship. All right? Um, Should I ignore? He claims like it's just like watching porn. (laughs) But come on. Fuck locals now. Uh, Red flag or is it just me? Looking forward to your response. Is it a red flag? It's, It's the fucking Soviet Union. Dude, I, I, I don't even know what the fuck to tell Yeah, it's over. It's over. Okay, you're 31 years old. You still got your life ahead of you. Get the fuck out of that thing now. That's a, that's a crock of shit. That's a crock of fucking shit. That's the easiest question ever. Why would you be looking at those apps? Exactly. Exactly. You're looking, to, you're looking for a new love, baby. All right. The great Andrew. Themelis just sent me the picture. Here we go. Let's see. Here we go. doodle do do Oh, my God. That's fucking unbelievable. Your dad is ridiculously talented. That is incredible. I'm going to have to post that. That's it. I got to do a show in Mexico. I mean, come on. All right. It's, it's the one from the first season where I got the gun up on my shoulder. Um, that is legit. All right. Well, tell your dad I said thank you so much. Thank you for uh, introducing you to my specials and you introducing him to The Mandalorian. I really appreciate it. And uh, you know what? One of these years when this stupid COVID thing is over, I'm going to go to an F1 race or a uh, MotoGP race down there. And then I'll do a stand-up show maybe the night before or something like that and have a great time. Uh, That means a lot to me. Thank you so much for sending that in. All right? Okay, people, that's the podcast. Have a great couple of days. Go fuck yourselves, and I'll check in on you on Thursday.